you've seen it already, uh, facial mocap tips and techniques. All right, so you can uh, browse this on your own time. And uh, by the end of the webinar, we're gonna be having a Q&A session as well. So uh, make sure you have any, if you have any questions uh, that you wanna ask uh, during the webinar, put those in the Q&A section of your Zoom panel there. There's a nice little Q&A section. I'm not gonna be answering questions from the chat window um, for the duration of the webinar. Um, I may be using it for, to put links in and stuff like that later on, uh, but we're gonna be uh, answering questions from the Q&A section. So make sure to put your questions there. You can put them there anytime, but we won't get, the, uh, get to them until the end of the webinar. Uh, and as always, we are recording this for posterity. Uh, we're live streaming on YouTube as well. So if you want to check it out on YouTube, um, if you are on YouTube, you may not be able to ask questions because the uh, questions are only available with the Zoom panel there. So uh, make sure you're, you're follow the, you follow the Zoom link and uh, join with Zoom uh, if you want to ask questions. And we are recording it, like I said. So if you miss anything, uh, you can always feel free to re um, review it later on your own time there. All right, what else do we have? Oh yeah, we, are, we're, we always uh, send out a survey for you guys at the end of the uh, webinar. So if you have any questions, comments, suggestions for future webinar, we're more than happy to uh, you know, accommodate those requests. We love to hear uh, you know, what you guys want to learn more about and uh, we can create webinars accordingly. Um, if you go down to the next webinar that's coming up in the end of the month here, I'll also be hosting this one. And this is a cool new feature called uh, Motion Link, a Motion Link plugin that allows you to uh, basically stream 3D motions to your 2D uh, Cartoon Animator 4 characters. Um, so this is a cool new feature that we just launched uh, this month. And I recommend uh, checking that out. If you're involved in 2D at all, um, make sure you check that out. It'll be a lot of fun, you know? It's always fun with these webinars. Anyways, okay, uh, one last thing before we move on here. In the content store, as always, there's your weekly special. So uh, the last one here, if you go to your content store, relusion.com slash content store, the last item here is weekly special. Normally you have some pretty sweet deals. Um, seems like today we have this one here for a dollar. <laughs> so this is a, uh, um, some uh, vehicles. If you're a, you know, a cartoon animator for user, uh, check out these vehicles. Um, you'd be crazy not to buy them for a dollar. I mean, it's like, a, it's not like a stick of gum these days. Um, anyway, so that's uh, the weekly special. Make sure you check back uh, every week for the new weekly special. There's like crazy discounts on content and, uh, you know, a lot of content to get. So um, make sure you check back every week, like I mentioned. Okay, I think that about covers it. We got a few minutes of introduction there. Um, welcome everyone. Um, I'm broadcasting here from uh, Vancouver, Canada, where it's already getting a little bit dark here. So uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit later on, the, the, the proper lighting that we need for our uh, facial motion capture. Uh, and I'll uh, get through that uh, right at the beginning here. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and start the live demo. I'm going to close down uh, my Chrome here. And I just have a project loaded up here that kind of um, demonstrates the ideal lighting, just because it's, you know, it's maybe it's easier to kind of see um, what sort of lighting scenario you, you, you should have. Um, you can see if we look at our character's face first, uh, the first thing to notice is that there's very little shadow, if any shadow on the character's face. Now we're gonna be using uh, facewear uh, for most of this webinar. Um, we can also use I the iPhone 10 or 11 or 12 uh, for this process. And I'll show you briefly how to, how to connect that, but we're gonna be using the facewear one just cause it's more convenient for me. And uh, my iPhone took a dive in the washing machine a week ago. So it's, the lens is a little bit foggy still. Um, putting it in some rice to see if that uh, helps. Anyways, uh, yeah, so we're gonna be using the uh, Facewear uh, webcam there. And um, yeah, so yeah, uh, notice that there's no shadows on the face, uh, very even lighting. Uh, that's what you really want because um, when you're doing the facial motion capture, you want to have, sometimes it can mistake the shadows for you know some sort of eyelash or eyebrow or something like that. And it'll you know cause glitches in your, in your capture. Uh, so you want very even lighting like this. And the way you achieve this is um, generally you can, what I'm doing right now is just kind of showing an example in iClone. Obviously you can't really do this in real life. This is just a, a basic primitive shape of a rectangle. And I've gone over here to our um, materials and modify here. And if we go down a little bit further into GI settings, GI stands for global illumination in case you're curious. And I can answer more questions about that later, but it's not, the details aren't really relevant right now. Just make sure you have your item selected and then you can select illumination. And notice when I turn that off, okay, you notice that the, the light will go off on our character's face and uh, it'll just be like this, the scene lighting, um, the basic scene lighting. So the reason I'm choosing this is because this is a very even and a very diffuse light uh, that just, you know, doesn't cast any shadows on your character's face. 
alternately what you could do if i mean uh it doesn't really matter in iclone but if, um just make sure there's no, there's no shadows cast heavy shadows cast on the face alternately in iclone you could uh, create a spotlight with no shadows or even a point light so for example if i went to create light and uh, point light point lights don't cast shadows uh if you're not aware of that now you are uh, point light right there and just add that to our scene and uh, bring it over here by pressing the w hotkey uh, one easy way to do to align things to each other is just to use this uh, line tool up here you can select align to and then you can select your character's head x and y and uh, z axis doesn't matter and then just uh, move it back this way okay so if i delete that uh, rectangle now you'll see that our character's face will be uh, also evenly lit. Okay. Because like I mentioned before, it doesn't cast any shadows. Obviously this one is, is a, a, a lighter color because the color of our light is brighter. Um, but just keep that in mind. Uh, that's kind of generally I just wanted to show you um, different ways you can achieve that in iClone, but it's not really relevant because this is, we're talking about uh, in, in real life, this is the kind of lighting that you want. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to uh, load in a different project here and I'm going to show you how to uh, get started. We're going to talk about um, getting set up with a, a different program uh, called Faceware Real Time for iClone. And um, because the uh, the lighting unexpectedly, normally we have our webinars at uh, about 4 p.m. local time here on the West Coast. Um, since it's already kind of getting dark in Vancouver, I've had to kind of uh, fandangle something in my in my kitchen here and just to get the uh, sort of close to ideal lighting results. And you'll see my face in just a moment uh, when I load up this project. Um, so while that's loading up, uh, if you have the uh, Faceware um, uh, gear profile for iClone, it'll come with this little separate program called Real Time for iClone uh, right here. And when I load this up, you're going to see my face in just a moment here. I haven't had a haircut in a while due to all this COVID nonsense, but uh, there's me in, in my kitchen in the background there. Um, okay, so. Uh, the reason I have this is because you can see there's there's not very much um, dark shadows on my face. Maybe under my chin, there's a little bit of, of, of shadow there. But generally, I think the lighting is, is OK. It's not too harsh. Again, you don't want the lighting to be too bright or too harsh as well. That's one important thing to, uh, to, to keep in mind. And if I move my eyebrows, you can see the outlines generally follow my uh, facial features fairly closely. And that's ideally the, f the first test you want to, uh, to do is you want to move your head around like this and close your eyes and see how fast and if, if these like little outlines jump off the face, uh, your, light, your lighting uh, situation is uh, going to not be ideal. Uh, so let's go ahead and back into iClone. Hopefully our project is loaded up. There we go. We have our Rihanna lookalike here. Um, I'm going to show you the basics of how to get it set up. Uh, okay, so the first thing to do is let's go ahead and uh, minimize this. Let's just uh, move it over here and uh, bring this over here. Um, uh, let's just uh, close down the, let's move modify over here and close down our Unreal Live link. All right, so there we have a little bit of a bigger, maybe it should be on the other, other side. <laughs> I'm being too picky here. All right. Uh, oh, that's yeah, way too big now. Let's do something like that. All these where I get while I get set up here. It seems to be uh, different sizes for different uh, sizes of the. <laughs> okay, we'll just put my face here. Uh, okay, that'll be that'll work fine. Whatever. Uh, okay. So um, the first thing you want to do is have your character selected, obviously, in uh, an iClone here. And you have to have, there's, there's a couple of things I should explain first, actually. Let's go back into uh, Chrome really quickly here. And I'm just going to type in Motion Live iClone should pop up. So um, for those of you who aren't familiar really with the setup, uh, it may be confusing for the first time, first time users. What we have is a, a plugin for iClone called Motion Live. So this is the basic plugin that you need. And once you have the plugin, uh, you'll notice that there's a bunch of gears here. Okay, these are called gear profiles. And we have gear profiles for all sorts of uh, different hardware um, from iPhone, Faceware, Rococo, uh, Perception Neuron. We're, we'll have a bunch more in, uh, in this year, 2021 as well. 
Um, so keep uh, keep your eye open for those. And if you have any any recommendations for software, or if you are a hardware vendor yourself and you want to get our get your hardware supported by iClone, feel free to contact us. You can contact me, uh, Kai at Reillusion.com, or you can uh, contact anyone really. Sales at Reillusion.com would probably be the one. Um, so yeah, so then you have the, the the gear profiles, which you which are a separate purchase, okay, depending on which hardware you want to use, and uh, you just go from there, okay. So that's really the basics, and and you can browse this page. Um, I'll throw this into the uh, the chat window for you guys uh, in in Zoom here, so you have it uh, for future reference. But again, you can just basically uh, type in Motion Live iClone in uh, in Chrome or in uh, Google, and it'll pop up. Okay, and browse this uh, site on your own time. I know sometimes it's hard to find certain pages in our website, but uh, there you go. Okay, here's here's me again. Um, so what you want to do is have your character selected and go up to plugins. And in plugins, there's a Motion Live plugin I mentioned here. Now there's some quick panel display settings you can adjust here. Um, you can adjust your panel opacity. I'm not going to bother with these. We don't want to hide it during the preview or hide it during the recording. So don't worry about that. We'll just close it down. Uh, not really relevant. It's it's your personal preference. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and just load it up. There's also a help file here you can find and about whatever. All right, let's load a motion live. This is the plugin right here. It's gonna pop up. Let's uh, bring me up here and bring our profile or uh, window down here a little bit. Okay, you can kind of see me there. Uh, hey guys. Um, okay, so this may look a little bit uh, intimidating at first, but it's actually quite simple. Uh, you, you can see here the, the uh, number of the list of gears that I have installed. Currently, I only have uh, Live Face, which is the iPhone one, and Faceware Real Time, which is uh, Faceware, and Faceware Live is for remote broadcasting of that. And then um, Perception Neuron, XSense, Leap Motion, and for the hand, I have Perception Neuron as well. And there's uh, different categories: body, hand. In this uh, webinar, we're only talking about uh, facial. Okay, so uh, what you wanna do first is you can see I have the character list, the character selected, female underscore two. We could probably name her something more interesting, but uh, what you wanna do is go under face, since we're using face here. Um, before you do that, let's go ahead and select face wear real time. Click on that. And you notice the, the little circle there will turn green. And that means we're ultimately we're connected already and we can preview right now. But before we do that, I wanna um, go into our face wear real time for iClone uh, settings here really quick. Um, you can go to file or rather edit uh, settings right here. Uh, generally, you know, you want to keep these fairly uh, much the same. There's one difference here if, if you're using a, a, a head mounted camera. So like, uh, you know, those helmets and the, the cameras mounted to your head, head cam, then you want to change this to head cam, but I'm using a static cam. It's just my, my little laptop here. Okay, so we'll keep that. And we're just using our uh, camera, regular camera. There's various settings you can adjust for this, but I recommend just keeping the basics here uh, for now. Um, in case you're not aware, we are really um, going to be improving uh, facial motion capture and uh, and lip syncing specifically. Uh, lip syncing will be, I think, by the end of this month. So keep your eyes open for the, uh, the lip sync improvements. It'll be and the facial animation improvements are going to be incredible. Uh, I've already seen some previews of them. Okay, let's go back to the motion live here. So we have that connected, but we want to calibrate our neutral pose here. So the neutral pose is essentially the pose that uh, is the reference pose for, for your character's facial animation. And this has to be very neutral, just like a passport photo, okay? So I always have trouble tilting my head slightly. I don't know why. Um, anyways, so neutral pose, like a passport photo, like I mentioned, keep your eyebrows really relatively level. What I find personally is that sometimes if you have your mouth slightly open, slightly agape like this, like notice my lips, slightly open. And if you have your eyes slightly squinted like this, that to me, uh, for some reason, turns out the best results. Maybe it's just because of my specific facial structure. I look like a weirdo, but that, uh, you know, does, does it for me. And if you, if your eyes are the opposite end, then maybe your neutral pose can be slightly different. Okay, but I'm just gonna show you really quick here. So look at the camera. And then calibrate neutral pose, this one right here. So now it's, pre it's pretty much calibrated. That's all you need to do. And then when we have uh, in character list, then we can go down to under face 
and select Faceware real time. This is the plugin, or this is the gear profile that's going to drive our animation. So once we do that, you can see it's selected right there. Everything's good to go. We can go ahead and preview. Okay, so that's me um, controlling Rihanna's head. Hey, what? Okay. We can make all sorts of funny, weird expressions. And that's really all there is to it. So right now I'm just previewing. And you can do head turning as well. Okay, I can wink or look that way. Notice there's eyeball tracking as well. Okay. So it's pretty cool. And that's, that's really all there is to it. Um, from here, it's just a matter of kind of recording stuff and adjusting the settings. So what I'm going to show you is um, just how to kind of adjust the, the settings really quickly. And then we'll talk a little bit about um, controlling multiple characters at once. Now, let's just stop the preview for now by pressing the space key. So again, to preview, press the preview button down here and then press space. Okay. And then press space again to stop the preview. Um, I'm going to go through this really quick here, this mapping section here, uh, expression mapping panel. All this really does, um, it doesn't do a whole lot. If you click on it, you can see there's different control names. And essentially what these do is these kind of um, modify your, um, excuse me, modify your uh, neutral pose. So if, if, for example, you wanted your character, your character's right eye to be more shut than the left eye, and you can use this control right eye blink profile. And you can see that uh, you can adjust the sliders here. So this is going to be the preset. This is going to be like the before. And if you adjust this to certain levels, this will be the kind of the strength of that, uh, of that particular feature. If you wanted the jaw to be more open, you, know, you could use the, uh, whoops, let's use the jaw move uh, Y here. Okay, so if you wanted her mouth to be naturally more open like this, like maybe she had locked jaw or something, then you can do this. Um, I don't use these very much because I find they're not super effective in, in a lot of cases. Um, they, they do have a, a fairly uh, small result, uh, slight result, but uh, generally I try to keep things a bit more natural. Um, so you can also just select zero all and take them all back to normal there and close that down. You can also save your profiles here as well if you want to save them or uh, open them from previous uh, examples. I don't have time to kind of go through all the troubleshooting on this stuff, but uh, if you want to save them, if you find like a specific um, combination of values that you find really suits your character, then save the profile right here. Okay, you can just save it up there. I'll close that down for now. I'm not going to bother with that. Um, there is an option here, which we'll talk about later, record audio for Visine track. And this is if you want to do the lip syncing uh, with just the facial capture. And I'll talk about various different ways to do that a little bit later on. Um, there's also this masking down here. So notice that in the masking section, all of the different um, facial sections are already selected. They're all green, okay? Uh, I'm just gonna quickly preview to show you um, what this means. So if I preview, notice my eyebrows are like this. If I deselect one of my eyebrows, like my left eyebrow, then even though my face is moving both eyebrows, my character's left eyebrow isn't moving. Okay, so you can mask out the eyebrows completely. And you can do something like uh, mask out the jaw. So my mouth is opening, but our character's mouth is staying just like that. So. Now you notice the difference. You can mask out certain parts and you can layer your animation over top of that as well. Um, there's mirror, which is basically just like mirror from side to side, very basic. I don't really know how it's useful in most cases, but um, that we have that option. Um, there's also smooth head. Now, if you find that your, your animation is kind of too jittery and too sharp, you can use smooth head. And it basically what that does is it just kind of slows I'm not sure if you can see on the zoom, but if you see my, my head will move quickly from side to side and there'll sort of be a delay, like a smooth delay uh, with my character. 
uh, with the character's head movement. So it just kind of smooths things out. Um, and that can be, you know, fairly useful in, in, in certain cases, uh, it, particularly in, in cases where there's uh, lighting um, situations. Okay. Uh, so I'll just take that off for now. One of my eyes is like a little bit weird, but okay. And more, most important uh, for me, I find the most important way to, uh, to get your facial capture to be ideal is to go here to the strength tab. Uh, now under strength, we have a couple of different strength sliders. Uh, the global one, <laughs> um, generally you won't want to make this one too high because you'll end up looking like some cartoonish version of the Joker. Whoa, and it's really hard to, to control it, okay? So I generally keep my global down to like the regular value. Um, to, to reset all of these values, by the way, if I say, for example, had it at 152, I can just double click the actual text global and that'll take it back down to the default value, okay? Um, brow, I find sometimes fairly useful. Like my brows are fairly emotive, okay? Um, I'm fairly good at, you know, controlling my eyebrows. Um, and if I want to take those down, I can, okay? Um, there's eyelids and eyeballs and stuff as well. Um, the ones that I find really useful are cheek. And I, and I like, I personally like to um, um, increase the cheek value. Let's just go ahead and stop the pre. I'm going to recalibrate really quickly because I think my face has kind of gone out of. You may need to recalibrate occasionally if you're, uh, uh, if you're experiencing some weird results. Um, so I like to have the cheek value fairly high because I find that the having a higher cheek value really actually has a lot a much stronger effect on, on your character's uh, face. Um, so I like to increase the cheek value for most of my captures. Maybe it's just me. And it really depends on your character as well. Um, let's try the mouth, for example. You know, you generally want to have the mouth a little bit less. Okay, so it's a bit smoother. Uh, the jaw, I tend to have a little bit less as well. And then the head rotate, you can do whatever you want. Um, but for me personally, maybe it's my big mouth or something. I think the mouth and the jaw values tend to be a little bit uh, um, high. Uh, so I like to kind of take them down a little bit there. Okay, um, so that's, yeah, that's the basics of it. Um, and that's the basics, the basics of capturing. What we're gonna look at next is we're gonna look at uh, kind of recording and, and blending stuff together. Um, yeah, forget I'm on camera here. Uh, yeah, so don't, you can see if I go like that, my, uh, the little green outlines will lose, the, lose track of themselves. Then you wanna, you don't necessarily have to calibrate again, but I always do just like this. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, so let's stop previewing for now. Let's press the space key and stop previewing. And let's go ahead and get, uh, get some recording done. I'm gonna show you a very basic recording first. Um, I'm not gonna record audio for this uh, at first. What we're gonna talk about first is just recording and doing some quick modification using the, a couple of iClone tools, uh, the facial puppet tool, as well as the uh, motion key editor. Uh, and we'll talk about those a little bit later on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, re gonna record a quick sequence and we can just do this randomly. So now for recording, instead of pressing preview, you press record, okay? I'm just gonna press record and press space. Okay, press space again. So I just kind of did like three expressions um, really easily. So what we're gonna do now is to get this out of the way, uh, we're gonna close down the motion live panel here and it'll just disconnect, okay? Don't worry about that. We'll keep me in the background. Um, let's just uh, make this max size here and bring our character into focus. And generally what I like to do is click and drag this green triangle on the timeline to just kind of focus on the area that I'm working on. Okay, just like this. And then if we, uh, let's just get the zoom thing out of the way here. Actually, in my way, you guys can't see it, but. Uh, okay, so there we have it. Now you're probably wondering, you know, where does all this motion data go? And there's already a problem right there with my eye. I think I have a, maybe a lazy eye or something. Um, but if you press F3 and go into the timeline, you can also uh, 
click it over here and go into timeline. Um, let's just close down the project tracks right now. Uh, we don't need the uh, transformer click. We need the click to click clip later. Um, but your facial animation for facial mocap will be found under here. And you want to go into visine and expression. Okay. These are two tracks that you want to uh, that contain all the data for your facial motion capture. Uh, visine we don't actually need right now since it's actually just for audio, uh, for lip syncing. We'll talk about that later. Okay. So under the uh, um, expression track, you'll find three subtracks: one for muscle, one for eyeball, one for head. And we'll talk about this a little bit later on. But the, in the expression track itself, you'll see a puppet clip right here. And this puppet clip contains the, uh, the data for the capture that we just did. Um, so if you're familiar with iClone, uh, you can actually modify this clip in so many different ways. You can cut it, you can clip it, you can warp it, you can do all sorts of fun stuff. So maybe what I'd wanna do right off the bat here is I'll start here where her eye's not messed up. Um, or I can even just start at the beginning and uh, we can use our first tool, which is the motion key editor. Uh, and you can find that by going into your uh, animation or motion tab here and go down to edit motion layer tool. Okay. And here's your edit motion layer tool. Now, what we want to do here, uh, whoops, let's go ahead and close that down first. Uh, that's for the, for the body rather. <laughs> you want to go to facial and face, face key editor here. Okay. That one's for the body, but they're both for keyframes. So in the face key editor, you'll find a couple of different sections here, uh, muscle, expression, and modify. We're not gonna talk about expression or modify in this webinar. If you wanna learn more about that, you can ask me in the Q and A. We're gonna talk only about muscle because uh, this is kind of basically, uh, these, these are gonna show up in these, in these three tracks here, muscle, eyeball, and head. Now let's go a few frames ahead first so we can actually see this. And if I take my character's left um, eyelid, I click it and I click and drag it. Notice we can make it larger or we can make it uh, or wider or more narrow like this. And notice that when I release that button, it creates a keyframe in the muscle track here. So this is called keyframe editing. And this is what you do to uh, do some very quick, uh, very more, de more detailed refinements on your, on your facial capture. So say for example, I didn't like that, that that eye was so, you know, so, so closed. I can take it down like this. And from this point on, that capture, you can see right here, it gets larger. So what you wanna do here is as, as, as the eye is getting larger, you can press, uh, you can select default. Whoops, let's just use this erase thing to um, clear all the selections. And then you can select default key. And what default key does is that basically creates a keyframe for all three tracks, for the eyeball, the head, and the muscle. Um, we'll just focus on the muscle right now, and we'll click and drag our, our keyframe to the very beginning, because if we go to the here, you can see it doesn't have much of an effect, but generally you wanna keep it clean, take it to the very first frame there. Okay, so essentially what we've done is we fixed that, uh, um, well, for the most part, we fixed it. We can probably uh, copy that keyframe, right click it and copy it, and it seems like it needs to be pasted down here a little bit further. Right click and paste it. Okay, and then it'll remain, um, you know, and, and your, your timing can always be adjusted on this as well. I can probably bring this one up and there we go. And we'll just leave it like that. Okay, so if you play back, you know, keep it like that and uh, you should have a fairly good result. And of course the timing can always be adjusted for all these, yeah. And again, it's just a matter of getting them all perfect. We'll leave that little uh, little brow raise there in there. Okay, so that's the muscle stuff. And of course, it, it's not only the eyelids, there's also other features as well. So say for example, right here, as she turns her head this way, maybe I wanted to raise the outer part of this eyebrow. So I can take this eyebrow right here, I can select all the eyebrow sections and I can click and drag them. Um, before we do that, what I'd want to do is actually add another default key. This is kind of the best practice for doing keyframe editing. Add a default key. Okay, so that adds our keyframes right there. And then right here is where from the default key to here, we want her to raise her eyebrow. So we'll click and drag and raise that eyebrow like this. 
maybe we want the inner part to be a little bit lower. So we click that inner part and take it down like this. And then from here to here, what we have is this, that little brow raise, the very slight brow raise. Okay, so I mean, when you're when you're doing your facial motion capture, sure you can get a lot of the raw the raw facial animation um, captured within seconds, um, but you may want to go and review it and kind of maybe you know it would be like it'd be kind of cooler if I did this during my capture or did, did that during my capture. And what you can do is you can easily tweak it like this, raise that brow, and then for as long as you want the brow raised, what you would do is you would copy that keyframe and paste it um, for as long as you want it raised. Maybe as she's coming back to the other side, paste it there. And then again, down here, we'll take it back to default key. Uh, I forgot to mention as well, default key basically takes it back to the default, um, the base value. So the base animation that you captured. So uh, any, anytime you add default key, um, it'll just take it back to the original data that came from the clip. If you don't want to do that, you can simply just double click in the, in the clip or in the track, like double click in the muscle track and you'll add a keyframe there. Okay, I can uh, right click and delete that and so on and so forth. There's also transition curve presets, which I don't know if we have enough time right now to, to um, check out, but we'll maybe take a look at that later if we have more time. Um, Cause that's another way to really uh, um, emphasize and uh, refine the animations. Okay, so we have this eyebrow raise. So we have the eye correction, right? like this and then eyebrow raise. And then um, maybe right here, her mouth is like, uh, you know, we wanna increase the size of her mouth. So let's go to default key there. And right here, take that jaw section. Oops. And uh, bring that uh, a little bit wider. And let's take her eye eyelids and bring those up as well. So she, she looks more surprised. Okay, so from here to here, she goes, wow, like that. And she's screaming or yelling. And uh, then we'll copy that and paste it somewhere. That's anywhere is fine. And then take it back down to uh, default key right here. Okay, so then I have this uh, much more emphasized screen and back to default key. Now there's also the uh, the head motion as well. So there's there's eyeball. Uh, again, if you wanted to, um, let's say for example here, we wanted to make her eyeballs kind of cross-eyed and we can do that as well. Just uh, select the eyeballs and uh, maybe bring this down like that. Select this one and bring it down like that. Okay, so now she looks really surprised. You can see that adds a keyframe in the eyeball track specifically. And then uh, copy and paste that. And then we'll go back to default. Okay, so then we have something like this. Okay, it looks kind of weird, but uh, uh, maybe a bit cartoonish. And then of course, there's the head track. Okay, so the head track is right here. We added that default key right here, maybe right here. What we can do is use, these are the two head uh, uh, tools. Let's make these erase first. Let's clear the selection. We can use these two head tools. And once you have those selected, they'll, they'll highlight in green. And then you just click anywhere in the black area surrounding the character's head. And you can move the head like this to uh, whatever direction you want. Okay, so maybe make it a little bit higher like that. And then uh, down here, We'll take it to maybe down to here. So then you can see it adds those keyframes in the head track as well. So we have like this and back to normal. Uh, now I'll show you really quickly the, uh, the um, transition curve for the head. Okay, because we have it going from up here to down here and then back to normal. Let's say for example, we wanted to add a bit more of a dynamic movement of that head from one from this keyframe at frame uh, 228 to this keyframe at frame 283. Well, what we wanna do is we wanna select the, the second keyframe, right click it and go to transition curve presets. Now you can also use the um, uh, curve editor tool for this, but I'm just gonna show you these transition curve presets. If we wanted to use say, for example, let's use a dynamic one like end and a bounce. 
Okay, you'll see that uh, if we do that, uh, when she, before she reaches this second keyframe, it'll kind of be like bouncing, boing, boing, boing like that. Um, you can also use this one here. This, this is like a ease in, ease out. This smooth preset right here. There's also stutter start. Okay, so that's kind of, this is a, these are kind of good presets for shock or surprise. You can like shutter start, you're like, what? And then there's also, um, you know, these various ones. You can experiment with them on your own time, but it's just kind of showing you how you can uh, modify the movement even further between uh, two separate keyframes right there. Okay, so uh, we'll go ahead and we'll just leave this at, uh, let's leave that smooth, okay? So maybe make it a bit stronger. So you can increase the strength of that smooth there. Okay, that's fine. I'm not going to be too picky. Okay, but that basically shows you um, the ways that you can refine using keyframe editing. Um, and if you want, you can right click on this clip here. You can flatten the expression clip. And what that does is that will just basically bake all of these keyframe edits into your clip. So you won't be able to have these, you won't be able to edit these keyframes anymore. So if I wanted to go ahead and select flatten expression clip, you can see all those keyframes disappear and we won't be able to uh, edit them anymore. I'll just control Z that. Uh, you can also right click and sample expression clip. And what that'll do is that'll just create tons and tons of keyframes uh, that will um, yeah, basically give you more than you need to be honest with you. But, uh, and then you can also export expression clip right here as well. We'll talk about this stuff a little bit later on. Um, but yeah, that's the basic face key editing. Now I'll show you one more quick little tool here. Uh, this one is the uh, face puppet tool. And this is one, this is the, the uh, um, quick and dirty tool I like to call it, uh, the face puppet tool right here. If we click this, select it, um, let's use, uh, it doesn't really matter which uh, profile we use. Let's say for example, I wanted to um, overwrite my character's eye uh, animation, like eyeball animation. Um, in real time. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select the, the two of uh, my character's eyeballs. And if I preview, notice that my character's eyeballs will follow the mouse movement. Okay. And uh, um, this, this one's kind of tricky sometimes because you have to be sure um, that your, your timing is correct. It takes some, some timing. Uh, you, don't worry, you, you can always preview and, and whatever. Um, but what you want to do is you want to make sure you have blend data on next recording selected because what the face puppet tool does is it also creates a clip in the expression track and it will overwrite um, or it will blend your animations into the base motion capture that you had. So say for example, I wanted my character to look around, you know, left to right as she's, as she's uh, moving her head. Let's go ahead and increase the strength of that maybe to like a value 1.5 and then just go ahead and record. So I'm gonna move my eyes to the left, to the right like that. Okay, and then I kind of just um, move them all around. Uh, so what, what I can do now is play back. Okay, and I had those eyeballs move up a little bit before they move back down. So this, this part right here, they move up like that that's what I did with the uh, uh, face puppet tool, okay? And it just blended that into the previous uh, animation. So then it comes back down to here and back down to normal. And this extreme eye movement from left to right, I also did that, okay? Just using the mouse movements. So, um, you know, a word of warning with, uh, with the face puppet tool, it's very uh, uh, dirty and uh, quick and dirty, like I mentioned here. Um, but if I press F3 and go into the timeline, one thing to notice is that it removes all those keyframes that we had because your facial puppet tool, like I mentioned, it will overwrite this puppet clip. You can see right here, it'll overwrite the puppet clip and that means getting rid of all the uh, previous keyframe edits. They're still there, they're just baked into the clip now. Uh, okay, so generally the rule of thumb is that you want to do, if you're gonna use face puppet, you know, for some quick and, and dirty edits, you're gonna, you're gonna, you wanna use the face puppet before uh, you use the uh, key, uh, face key editor, okay? So I did it the opposite way. I used the face key editor first because I wanted to show you that it just basically overwrites everything. Um, but yeah, you generally wanna use the face puppet tool first. And it doesn't matter even which um, 
sections of the face you select, in this one I only selected the eyeballs, it will overwrite uh, that previous animation. Okay, so just be aware of that. Um, if I control Z that, maybe I'll get back to my original a few times. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now it's just like we didn't do that, we didn't even touch that tool. Okay, that's um, it for face key editing. We have a blend data, face puppet tool, mocap, face key editing. Let's talk finally about um, recording audio and lip syncing. This is the next section here that we're gonna talk about. Um, for this, let's go ahead and use a different character. Um, um, by the way, let's actually maybe just uh, save this out uh, before, I'll just quickly show you how to save this from the clip. You can right click on this clip and you can uh, export the expression clip. And this is just kind of a, an iTalk file. I don't recommend doing this, but uh, you can do this. If I want to export this entire uh, facial animation sequence, you have to make sure you have your collect clip track open. Okay, this is the one right here. And click and drag in the collect clip track for the duration of your clip. And then just right click it and select add motion plus to library. Okay. Um, we're using motion plus because motion plus contains facial and body animation. If you select add motion to library, it's only going to add the body animation, which in this case there is none. Okay. So, excuse me, add motion plus to library is what you want to select. Uh, gesture is for hands, okay? And you can also send them to 3D Exchange to export to, uh, to other software as well. Let's go ahead and quickly add motion plus to library. Um, you want to make sure here you select uh, facial animation, obviously visible, it doesn't really matter. Uh, morph and facial animation are, are the ones you definitely want to select, okay? And uh, there's not really any accessories in here. I'm not sure if her earrings really uh, moved or anything like that. But uh, yeah, so just go ahead and press OK. And we'll just save this to our desktop. We'll call it uh, Weird Expression Sequence. Probably a bit long for a name, but that's OK. OK, so let's go ahead and start a new project uh, with a different character. And I'll show you the, uh, the lip syncing stuff uh, for the next uh, 15 minutes or so. And then we'll get to our Q&A. Uh, project. Let's go ahead and close this down first. Content manager. Um, let's load in this uh, tune character just to give you a sort of a brief, uh, different sort of uh, look. Uh, we don't need to save that. And while we're at it, I'll show you how you can control because this project has two characters in it. <clears throat> I'll show you how you can control two characters at uh, at once. It's really not that hard. I'm kind of pumping it up like it's really cool, but not really. <laughs> uh, but we'll do it anyway, since we have the, the two characters on the screen. Okay, all you gotta do is, um, we'll bring me up again. Uh, whoop, there I am. Um, calibration seems okay. Uh, let's bring this over. And uh, plugins, motion live, motion live. And make sure you connect to face for real time. And you see now down here, we have two characters. Okay, so you can select the same thing for both characters. Face for real time, face for real time. And um, where does this go? Uh, okay, let's calibrate really quickly again. Okay, and then preview. Okay, so now you can see I'm controlling both characters. All it takes is just basically um, selecting the face where real time uh, gear profile for both characters, C1 and C2. Okay, good enough. So uh, let's see which character, whoops, I don't want to record yet. Which character should we choose? Um, since I'm going to be using a man's voice, maybe we should select the male character, although the female character does look better. Uh, yeah, okay, since I'm, you know, I can't really do a very good uh, woman's voice, unfortunately. So I'll choose the man, even though his face is, because his lips are so thin and uh, his his, fa his um, face is so thin, it may look a little bit uh, different, but uh, yeah, we'll use him. That female character, she animates really well for facial capture. And I think stylized tune characters like this, they animate like excellent with uh, facial motion capture. Uh, and like I mentioned, stay tuned for the next month or so here, we're gonna get some really huge improvements to this whole thing. 
So this is the last, this is probably the worst that you're going to see um, for the rest of time in iClone. It's going to be a lot better after this, um, after this month. Okay, anyways. So there's a couple of ways to do um, uh, lip syncing. Uh, one is when you're in the motion live panel, you can select this option to record audio for Visine track. Okay, and um, let's just start with this. Okay, we'll start with this. And you can see I have my microphone selected here. I think my face um, animation is fine. Let's just uh, think of something to say. Hey everyone, welcome to this. Welcome to today's webinar. I hope you're having fun. All right, simple. Okay, so let's just record this and uh, give it a shot. Oh. Let's uh, make sure that we have the character selected first. Okay. Okay, so a real time. It should connect. Oh, maybe I have to restart this since I deleted that other character. Let's try and restarting the motion live. Plug in. Mm -hmm. What are you doing, buddy? All right, we may have to restart that project. Let's see if that'll work. Um, ba -da -ba -ba. Where is our project? Or you know what? Uh, no, never mind. We'll keep this. Keep the same character. We could use a different character. Um, I guess I can take this opportunity while it's loading to show you. Um, uh, um, iPhone is essentially the exact same process. The only thing you're doing is you're selecting the iPhone um, instead of uh, Faceware real time when you go into the uh, the plugins. And I'll show you that once we uh, load up this uh, script here or load this project. Let's delete her. Focus on this guy. Hopefully this. No connection problems anymore. Half of half of IT Q and A is basically just shutting things down and starting it up again. And okay, there we go. Hello, hello. You can see his his lips are kind of weird, so they don't really pucker that well. Okay, but I'll just take the strength. Like I mentioned here, I like to increase the cheek strength. Um, take the mouth and jaw a little bit down. It's just my ideal for most people. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that record audio for Vising track. Hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar. I hope you're having fun. Okay, so um, what that did is if we close down our motion live track, okay. And uh, we play back. Oh, do I have my uh, volume? I oh, wonder if my uh, volume in my computer is on. Oh, I can't get down there. Okay, that should be working, weird. Well, it did uh, record some sound. I'm not sure where the sound's audio is not playing. Um, if I press F3 and go into my timeline with the character open, you'll find under the character tracks, you want to go to Visium this time. And Visium is where you'll find the, uh, oh, it did not record that. You, sh you should find a uh, clip here, a Visium audio clip here. Not sure why it's not uh, recording there. Let's see. You will find the uh, expression clip though, because that's the the basic clip. Um, generally, you'll find a Visium uh, track here, and uh, let's just try and maybe uh, restart icon really quick. And I'll show you how to uh, um, get the uh, iPhone stuff started. Uh, okay, let's quickly go into Hub. And let's open it up. 
I'm not sure if there's a conflict with uh, with Zoom or something like that. And just double check my. Uh... Hmm. Well, it should be fine. I've done it before. Gremlins in the system. Uh, okay. So, anyways, with uh, with iPhone, like I mentioned, you basically do the same thing. You just go into uh, um, the Motion Live plugin. And you just select the uh, live face, live face gear profile is the one for, for iPhone. Um, I kind of think that iPhone is, if you have an iPhone already, um, I prefer kind of using that sometimes. Uh, although you can't really beat the convenience of a webcam on, on your computer. Uh, you don't even have to have an iPhone. Um, but I kind of find like, I, I like the iPhone results um, in, in certain lights, certain uh, lighting, uh, they can be a little bit, uh, the performance can be a little bit enhanced uh in uh in terms of plosives which are when your cheeks pop out like a squirrel eating nuts or stuff like that i find that iphone has a bit of a better capture for that but face War does uh, perfectly fine too and uh in, in in the ideal lighting conditions it's excellent uh all right so let's go ahead and load a project i'm gonna load a different project maybe that guy's just bad luck let's load up um mail zero eight one zero whatever his name was and uh hopefully we have enough time we got about 10 minutes left to show you the uh lip syncing uh what i what i recommend doing is uh you can actually record the audio from your from your lip syncing from your raw lip sync and then you can re-import that onto your character and combine it with the facial animation i'm going to show you that process here I find that this gets the best um, initial results um, simply because I find that iClone um, has better results when, you, when it takes cleaned up audio as opposed to live audio. Like, for example, right now, my laptop is right beside my microphone. It's kind of, you know, creating a little bit of a fuzz, which can cause uh, interference. Um, all right, let's take this handsome fellow here and uh, try the same thing. Let me, so we need to make sure we have our uh, real time for iClone loaded up first. And make sure that I appear on the screen. Hello. Okay, interpose. And uh, you know the rest plugins, motion live. And again, for iPhone, you would just select Live Face and make sure there's a there's a program that you can download, um, Live Face app for the iPhone as well in the Apple Store, uh, and you it'll show you this number here. Make sure that number is the same. Uh, okay, so face it real time. Face it real time. Record audio revising track. Let's go ahead and say. Hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar. I hope you're having fun. Okay, I know cheesy, whatever. Let's just take this uh, project slider and let's play it back. Hopefully that, uh... hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar. I hope you're having fun. Okay, so that did it. Um, hopefully you can hear that audio there. So we have the raw data and that's really all I want. So I'm gonna close down motion live right now. Um, and press OK. So again, you can use all those techniques I showed you earlier. Um, one cool technique that I often use that I didn't show you with the uh, facial puppet tool is um, I showed you the eyeballs, but you can also do the entire head as well. So if I face puppet, say I'm talking to an audience, right? Um, what I would do is just take these two um, head uh, tools here and preview them. And you can see I can move my head from side to side. So if I'm talking to, if my character is talking to an audience, I may want to do something like this. You know, um, looks like he's kind of listening to music right now. Uh, just from side to side, really quick. So I'll just re record that really quick there. Hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar. I hope you're having fun. Okay, and there you go. So that's kind of now his head's kind of going from side to side a bit more there. Um, now. You can see that the, uh, the the lip sync results is not really the best, uh, and that's because you know my my audio recording uh, equipment right now it isn't super clean. Um, what I like to do is I like to clean up the audio in post production, a lot of the time, 
Um, and my kitchen is not the ideal, <laughs> not the ideal place for clean audio anyways. Um, but uh, the way to do that, I use this little program called Audacity, which I love. I've been using this for years. Um, it's down on my toolbar there. A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y, Audacity. This is a really, it's a free audio editing software, absolutely free and uh, tons of tools, easy to use. Um, what I do is I just go here and, and uh, make sure that we can, we can record the stereo mix from our, uh, from our audio output. Okay, here on the top, recording device. And this one has to be set to Windows Wasabi. I like to call it Windows Wasabi. I'm not even sure what Wasabi means. Um, but if you press record here, it's gonna record our mix, our, our output audio from our computer. So if I just press record, right now it's not recording anything. So we need to go to our iClone and press play. Hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar. I hope you're having fun. So you can see it records that audio output. Um, now it's very, very small. The levels need to be increased. So if I play back, hey everyone, welcome to today's web. Uh, what I like to do is take a, take a little section right here, click and drag it like this right here where it's, you can see, you can hear that little kind of annoying, but just go to effect and go to noise reduction and then just select get nose profile, noise profile, not nose. And then press Control A to select your entire uh, clip, and then go to Effect and Noise Reduction, and then press OK to remove all that background noise. Hey everyone! And that generally that generally works fairly well. You can do it a couple times. If you find there's still like a little bit, you can do it again. Just get a white noise area. Get a noise profile. Control A, Effect, Noise Reduction. OK. And then the last thing you want to do is you want to uh, click, uh, press Control A, and then press go to Effect and Normalize. Normalize will just kind of normalize the levels, okay, like this. And then you can see, hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar. I hope you're having fun. Okay, so you can see the audio is a lot, uh, a lot more clean, uh, even though it could be improved a lot. But uh, then I just click and drag in the areas that I don't want, like this area. Press Control X to cut it. Like this, control X, and then all we have is this. Whoops. Hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar. I hope you're having fun. Maybe we cut it off a little too early there. <laughs> but, okay, there we go. Okay, and then go to file and export, and export as MP3. And let's just call it as a, I don't know, test. Oh, we already have tests. Let's do test two. Okay, and save that as an MP3. Um, so what you can do then is go back into iClone, go to the first frame. Hey everyone. Or you wanna to go to the frame where he just starts talking. So uh, if I press F3 and go into the timeline, it's kind of easier to determine that. We go into our, uh, let's close the project down. Go into our Visium track here. And you can see here, this is the audio that I showed you before. And um, these little keyframes here in the lip section, these are our Visine uh, keyframes. But if you use the facial mocap for facial capture or for, for lip syncing, these basically do nothing. They're just generated, but all the data is contained within, the, uh, within the, the clip. So these ones really do nothing. Like if I double click on this woo, for example, and I change it to like O or R, you can see his lips won't change at all. However, if I go back and I go back to the, the frame where his, he starts the audio, like this one here. Hey, everyone. Hey, 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 hey. Okay. So very close to the beginning of our audio clip. Um, and I can just uh, go ahead here into create script. Uh, you can use text-to-speech. Text-to-speech honestly has the, the, the best results um, just because it's generated from an actual text. And the AI is a bit more intelligent. Um, I, I saved an audio file, so I'm going to go to audio file. Now, this one's a lot cleaner. Uh, it's going to have better results. So I'm going to go to test two, load that up. And now you can see we have this audio file right here. And if I double click on a keyframe now, like this, uh, let's go to this woo. Okay, you can see if I double click on that, it's fairly strong. I can take the strength down. Okay, so now I can use the, uh, the Visine, uh, the lips editor here 
to modify my visine and, and customize my lip sync. If you don't do that, then you have to use the muscle track that I showed you before. Um, if you if you're if you're using the uh, lip syncing from the from the bass, um, what we're talking about here. If you're using the lip sync from the from the bass uh, mocap animation, then you have to use the muscles track, uh, the muscles uh, face key editor like I showed you before. Um, so if you're more familiar with the Visine lips editors, you can you can use these right right here, and just follow that process that I showed you there. And your lip syncing results will be uh, reasonably better um, with this. You can still edit them as much as you want, though. Okay. Hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar. I hope you're having fun. Okay, so that's much better. Um, the audio is much cleaner. Um, and the character's lips, lip motions or lip movements are a lot more uh, re uh, refined. And uh, yeah, generally it's a better result. And you can do the same thing with uh, text-to-speech. Of course, with text-to-speech, it's going to have a robotic voice over top of that. Um, so just be aware of that. But I'm, I'm not going to bother showing that um, since we're kind of out of time right now. Um, yeah, so I think that's, that's about all that we'll, uh, we'll cover today. Um, anything that you want to... Uh, any questions you have, feel free to put those in the Q&A panel and we'll get to those pronto. All right, so we'll start our Q&A now. All right, let's take a quick sip of my uh, Earl Grey there. Okay, first question from Jeremy. Um, any news on the Android versions of facial and motion capture apps? Uh, yeah, those are currently being worked on. I think they are coming really soon. Oh, I can't remember uh, if it's this quarter or Q2, but uh, coming very soon. Yeah, because we've had a lot of demand for you know people who don't use iPhones. Um, they want to use like the Android facial capture. A lot, a lot of Android devices have the same technology. Uh, so yeah, we are, we are working on that. I can I can guarantee you that. And those will be kind of launched, uh, I believe, within the next few months here. Uh, so just keep your eyes peeled and, and watch our website for updates. We'll probably email you if you're if you're subscribed to our email uh, list, anyways. Um, but yeah, that'll be. I can tell you for sure that the super improved uh, facial mocap will be uh, launched later this month. Uh, the facial or the facial muscle results. There's a lot more muscles being modified, and, and the the facial animation is a lot more detailed as well. All uh, right. Yeah, I can't, sorry, I can't give you much more of a specific timeline on that, Jeremy. I know it's it's in the high demand from a lot of our users. Uh, okay, anonymous attendee, ooh, mysterious. Uh, do you need proper lighting if using the iPhone for motion capture? Um, asking because of the infrared dots iPhone uses. Yeah, so iPhone uses a different technology for the facial capture rather than the, than the webcam does. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, I kind of find that it, do, it can perform a little bit better in, in low light situations. Uh, but obviously you want to have the clearest lighting possible, avoid shadows. Like I mentioned before, um, iPhones used what's called like a depth cam. Okay. So kind of, kind of like what the connect used, uh, before, uh, um, and you can get the best results obviously with, with less shadows, but, uh, it, it is a bit more robust, I think, in terms of lighting, just in my experience, uh, some, some others might debate that out there, but, uh, okay. Cole asks, uh, is that using your webcam? Yep, I'm absolutely just using a laptop webcam here. Your run of the mill laptop webcam. Nothing special about it. Absolutely nothing special about it. Uh, Jonathan asks, is there an option within iClone to import VDB files to animate volumetric realistic fluids? Uh, not yet. Um, in terms of volumetric realistic fluids um, from stuff like Unreal or Blender, uh, the only time I've ever even experimented with that is in Houdini, uh, but iClone, I'm not sure with version eight, uh, if that's uh, a thing, but I, I do know that there is improvements that are going to be made to, to liquids for sure. Um, but again, real time, it's a little bit trickier. Um, yeah, so I can't give you a solid answer on that. Uh, definitely not with iClone seven anyways. Okay, uh, Ayman Hindam asks, uh, any plan to include Intel RealSense for facial and motion capture? We have had some requests for that, Intel RealSense. Um, however, I'm not sure if the demand has, has been met yet um, because we have a lot of, we, we kind of have a, a queue of, of hardware that are 
we're waiting to be compatible with with uh, iClone motion capture. Uh, there's actually a lot of companies that have approached us and they want to have um, their hardware available for our uh, our system, or our software rather. So uh, I'm not sure where Intel real sense is on that. Um, but generally we're going with the more professional um, level ones uh, to start off anyways. Um, but I'd have to get back to you on that. Uh, another question from Jonathan. Uh, last year's tech events went to virtual online demos. Do you think Realision will have events virtual this year? Um, yeah, I think I, I'm, as far as I know, Seagraph and, and uh, GDC and all those, they're still canceled for this year, as far as I know. Uh, those are going to be in, I mean, GDC, I think is in March and Seagraph is in July, generally. I don't know um, what's going to happen with those, but uh, we will, if, even if they're not in person, we will have virtual stuff like we did last year. Uh, we, did, we did the virtual booth in Seagraph last year. Um, we'll, we'll do something for sure during that time. I can guarantee you that, but I don't know exactly what yet. Um, but we will have something available for, for to demonstrate all of our new technology. Um, okay, question from Cole. Is there a way to lock a camera to the face if there is mocap data on the body? So you can do facial animation to a locked camera. Um, yeah, absolutely. The, the easiest way to um, lock a camera to a face, first you have to have a camera. Ooh, this guy looks cool there. Hey, what's up? Uh, create camera. Okay, so let's create our camera first. Um, it's just called camera. Uh, so make sure our character is selected and go to modify, go to your attributes tab. And do, 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 do. there's a look at feature. And just make sure you select uh, your camera is selected. So up here, go to camera and then just go to look at camera. Okay, so that creates a restraint on your character. And if I move my camera like this way, you can see he'll follow the camera. This way, he'll follow the camera. So if, if, if we play back from this point, hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar. I hope you're having fun. Okay, so I mean, he'll now he'll stay kind of confined to the camera, and it creates a little bit less of the head motion. It's kind of uh, it kind of blends the uh, the head mocap that you created earlier. Um, that's the way to get your your character, and you can you can move the camera live while you're playing back as well. So, hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar. I hope you're having fun. Okay, so just be aware that it'll overwrite basically all of the the head movement. Uh, now you can also change the look at weight to, to more of the eye. And when, when you do that, uh, what will happen is this. Oh, oh yeah, we moved our camera. So we play back. Hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar. I hope you're having fun. Okay, so hey everyone, welcome yeah, to- okay, enough of that. <laughs> um, yeah, so then it will retain more of the original head, uh, head movement. Uh, and but his eyes will kind of be looking really focused more on the eye. So it's, it's about finding that balance, right? Okay. And for that, let's go to the next one. Sterling does Sterling Jones does iPhone Live Link work better than the face for real time? Yeah, I get like <laughs> I get asked this all the time, and all I can say is generally what I've what I've experienced with a, with a solid lighting with solid lighting and and a you know, a, a good uh, environment. Yeah, face wear is perfect. It works just great. Uh, it, it'll be working even better in the near future here. Um, but if you already have an iPhone, I mean, some people, for, for some people, they look at the price, right? Like if you look at the price of the uh, the gear profiles, the face wear gear profile is, is, is not inexpensive. Um, but if you already have an iPhone, iPhone 10 or above, I think the gear profile for the iPhone is like only a couple hundred bucks or something like that. So that, I mean, that might be the decision maker for you, um, depending on, on that. Um, if, if, I, if I had an iPhone, I might consider, you know, use, getting the iPhone profile instead. Um, but then again, you have to set up your iPhone with a stand and everything like that uh, at the ideal height and, and the ideal lighting and everything. Whereas 
the webcam will just be connected to your your, your camera or your, your uh, computer. Again, uh, results, uh, performance, fairly, fairly similar. Um, but just a couple things like I noticed before with the uh, lighting and, and so on. Uh, okay, another anonymous attendee, will there be a plugin for Android phones or GoPro for face mocap? Um, not for GoPro yet, but Android phones, like, like I mentioned earlier, that's on the way. Um, yeah, I think that's what I like an answer for that one. Um, okay, next one, another question from Iman. How to export uh, facial motion capture to Unity uh, from iClone or CC3? Um, so I showed you earlier um, exporting to the motion library. Um, and again, if we wanted to maybe, for example, uh, the second part of this project, we could just uh, apply that uh, animation to our character that we had earlier. Where did I save it to? So I thought I saved it to the desktop. Oh, there we go, weird expressions right here, okay. So just click and drag that onto your character. Shazam. Okay, and I'm gonna turn off the look at camera because it's just making things look weird. Set free. Oh, we need to set free at the beginning. Okay, and we have this. Okay, so that's the animation we saved earlier. And then if you want to um, export that to FBX, um, there's a couple ways you can do it. One is through Character Creator. The other is through 3D Exchange. So in 3D Exchange, you would just take, a, uh, where is it here? There we go. You can basically just import that animation um, directly into 3D Exchange. Well, there's me again. <laughs> I forgot I was still on. <laughs> I'm hunched over my computer or my uh, kitchen island. Uh, okay, so you just take that um, weird expression, pump it into a uh, 3D exchange. It'll come up with an entire body, okay? But what you wanna focus on is, is the face. Okay, so, and again, this can be applied to any uh, character creator icon character that you export. Okay, so basically, yeah, that animation will be exported like that. And then you go to file, uh, export to FBX. Okay, and then uh, from there, you just import it into your, into um, uh, Unity or Unreal, whatever you, whatever you have. The easier way to do that is actually to export it with uh, character creator. Um, you know, I, I could show you that. Um, again, you have to have character uh, character creator pipeline. Um, something to remember for all of our software: if you want to export to other software like Unreal or, or anything like that, uh, Maya Max, you need to have a pipeline version. So, pipeline if, if if there's a pipeline name on any of our software, it essentially means that that exports to other software. Uh, you can export to FBX or other formats. Right. So if you have Character Creator 3 pipeline, it's actually less expensive than uh, 3D Exchange. And uh, it also includes, obviously, you can create a lot more cool things with it. Uh, and you can actually export a number of uh, animation files with your FBX um, at the same time. And I'll show you that. We'll just go into the next question here while it's loading up. Uh, okay, so Larry asks, can you cover once again the key software add-ons and plugins that were covered today in order to download them? Um, so unfortunately, none of the, none of the plugins are free, uh, Larry. They, they, all, they all have a, a price, unfortunately. Um, they are free for 30-day trial. Um, so you're said, you said the Leap Motion is asking for more prerequisite software. So um, make sure that your Leap Motion um, controller is fully updated. Uh, this is one thing that we've had problems with before. So if you're using Leap Motion, I don't have mine set up right now, but if you have it uh, loaded up, uh, should load up here momentarily. I'm loading too many things. Oh uh, yeah, but just, just make sure it's, it's fully updated. I'm pretty sure you can figure out how to do that. Um, 
where were we here? Oh yeah, I was in the Q and A. Yeah, that's, that's one thing I can uh, mention to you, Larry. Just make sure uh, the the um, Leap Motion profile is updated. In terms of um, where you can download them, that Motion Live uh, page that I sent earlier in the chat window. Um, yeah, it's it's up there somewhere in, in the chat window. The link, uh, the Motion Live page is where you can find all that stuff. Hopefully, that answers answers the question there. Um, next question is from uh, H Bagdasarian. Is there a way to control the latent latency? And do you have any tips for when a character freezes? Um, controlling the latency. Um, one one thing I can uh, definitely tell you is if you're using iPhone, it, it's a wireless. Uh, generally, it's a wireless operation, but you can actually connect it via USB. So when you connect it via USB, it uh, totally avoids that latency issue. Uh, sometimes if you're, if you're using uh, um, uh, Faceware real time, sorry, Faceware uh, live or, or live face, and you're using it through wireless means or over the internet, sometimes that can create uh, latency issues. But if you have it hardwired into your computer, there shouldn't be any problem there at all. Uh, yeah, that's all I can really say um, for, for that. Uh, and I also encourage everyone as well to check out our forums. Uh, we have a lot of people in our, in our forums that, uh, you know, uh, kind of share all their problems and share their solutions with each other. Uh, that's a really good good place to, to, to check out. Um, I'll just put that in the, in the chat window for you. It's just forum.relusion.com there. And I'll uh, throw that into the uh, chat window for you. There you go. Uh, tons of people there who are, you know, every day spending hours and hours on this stuff and just uh, figuring out new things all the time and are more than happy to, to help answer answer questions that you guys have. Uh, okay, anonymous attendee says, why are there two prices for faceware for members? I've noted two discounted prices. Uh, I can't really say um, in that regard. Um, you know, there's there's loyalty bonuses for for longtime members. Uh, on your on your pricing, and that'll be specific to your account. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have access to all the users' accounts, so I can't really comment on that specifically. So sorry about that. Uh, okay, so Larry asks, what's the difference between Faceware Live and Faceware Real Time? So Faceware Live, uh, like I mentioned before, is the uh, remote kind of you can do it remotely, uh, and Faceware Real Time is just uh, you don't you don't need to have the uh, remote uh, um, IP address. So plugins, motion live. So you'll notice that there's a, for Faceware Live, there's a connection uh, um, number right here. Okay, you need to enter that in. The same with your with your source, your source um, system or, or equipment. And you, you just need, it needs to be the same as here. Faceware real time is just on my webcam uh, connected to my computer. So I don't need to have a, a connection for that. All right. No IP address needed. Um, ba -ba -ba. Uh, okay, so Eric mentions, Eric Weitz, uh, what other software solutions would you recommend modifying the captured data in a more direct way? Um, I mean, I'm not sure which, um, what sort of cap, what sort of modifications you want to make. I think the ones that I showed you in, in this in today's webinar are fairly basic. Um, obviously, with the uh, um, uh, keyframe editing, it's a lot more detailed. Uh, but I don't use any other motion software other than iClone to, to edit my facial animation. So I can't really recommend that to you. I mean, you could technically take it into something like Motion Builder. Um, but again, the tools are fairly, fairly comparable. Uh, so I wouldn't, uh, I mean, wait until the new stuff comes out in, in uh, the end of this month here, the facial capture, and you'll, uh, you'll see the improvements. But in terms of the, the tools that you want to use to modify, um, yeah, I mean, I couldn't really see anything aside from Motion Builder, and that would just be like uh, purchasing a new program, uh, you know, for, for a small, small task, I guess. Uh, but yeah, that's that's up to you as well. If you already have Motion Builder, that's that's perfect. You know, you can use that to to do things as well. Um, I'll get to the next one here. 
Uh, Eric asks, are there also plans for supporting multiple layers of captured data as opposed to the current destructive editing in iClone 7? Uh, multiple layers of captured data. I mean, you can, I, I, showed, I showed the blend feature a little bit earlier, like blending uh, data together. But in terms of multiple layers, uh, that requires sort of a, a timeline overhaul. I do believe that that's being considered um, for the next version. Uh, I think that's being worked on right now. But uh, currently, as of yet, uh, we don't support the multiple layers. That'll be uh, in, in the future there. Um, another question from Sterling. Uh, can you talk more about the improvements to Facewear? Uh, yeah, Facewear is, um, uh, it, it has been improving. And we're, we're, you know, every update they have, we're keeping updated with that because that's one of our main um, uh, tools for, for facial animation right now. So we're keeping updated with all their improvements and it has improved, you know, uh, in various ways over the, over the years here. Um, but yeah, like I mentioned, it is, it is expensive, but so is an iPhone, right? <laughs> so it's kind of a, I'm trying to keep a balanced approach here, but uh, yeah, each one has their own uh, benefits. Face were obviously more expensive, but if you, if you don't have an iPhone. Uh, so Jonathan asks, will, will there be an Android version? Uh, yeah, I kind of answered that a little bit earlier. There will be an Android version coming out. Um, I believe that's going to be uh, in, a, in a few months or something like that. Uh, I can't really say specifically. Uh, okay. Anonymous uh, attendee asks the price of Facewear. Uh, so if you go to the Motion Live, Live iClone. Motion Live page. You can find the prices for everything. Just go up to buy at the top, and that'll bring up all the prices. So to navigate the purchasing page, just go down here to most recommended bundles. And uh, there's all the stuff down here, um, add-ons. There's the um, facial live face, face wear right here. You can see, again, not very cheap at all. <laughs> so yeah, be aware of that. Um, live face iPhone, significantly cheaper. Okay, and I'm not sure if I'm logged in. You may have a, a less expensive price on this. Generally, if you purchase it together with a, with a bundle, it'll be a lot cheaper. That's just the way things go. Um, like the uh, all-in-one bundle or something like this. Uh, um, yeah, like this all-in-one mocap solution. You get like all the stuff, even this facial mocap solution one right here. This one contains the iPhone. Um, this all-in-one I think contains the face wear. So you can see if you purchase, you get, I, you get iClone, you get 3D Exchange, you get the Motion Live plugin, you get a Perception Neuron Profile, Oracoco, you get Leap Motion, and you get a face wear all for two grand right now, um, you know, which is not that much more than the 1500 um, that you showed that I showed below. Uh, so just be aware of that. Um, bundles are always gonna be less expensive and each, each account will have upgrade, upgrade pricing as well. So just be aware of that. I don't really get involved too much in the pricing stuff. Uh, Cheryl asks um, about the Leap Motion controller to use in Cartoon Animator and got the profile for iClone with it. What do I have to buy for iClone to make it work? Uh, so iClone, you'll just need to buy the Motion Live plugin. And I think that's like uh, $199 or something like that. So to, because um, a cartoon animator and, and iClone will have their own separate plugins. But so the cool thing is that if you if you have the Leap Motion controller uh, you, and you buy the Leap Motion profile, you can use it for both software, okay? So you don't have to buy the profile for both um, both items of software. If you have the Rococo profile for iClone, you can also use that with Cartoon Animator. Um, same with Perception Neuron and all the other stuff. Just the Motion Live plugin, um, Cheryl, is to answer your question there. Um, so Larry asks, can a Connect Xbox 360 be used for face motions? Uh, no, not right now. We don't. We don't. We're not really messing around with the Connect um, Xbox 360 anymore. It's not really going to be supported in the near future here, since there's more accurate technology for that sort of stuff. Um, so Sterling asks, can you use Leap Motion for body capture for a puppet effect? Yeah, absolutely. You can, you can use um, the Leap Motion controller uh, simultaneously with a, a body capture and simultaneously with facial capture. 
um, all together on the same character. Um, however, uh, there is um, uh, Noitum uh, has a new glove. If you get the perception here on studio with Noitum, there's a great uh, glove set with that. I really like the the Noitum stuff. I think they've done a good job with the with the body motion capture, and they're always they have a very good support team, and they're uh, uh, you know innovating new stuff all the time. Uh, they do have a glove as well, and there's also that other glove names. Uh, skipping my mind right now. Uh, I'll get to that later. Well, it'll pop up in the middle of when I'm talking about something else. Uh, okay, so Eric asks, what frame rate does the capture software record at? Uh, 30 frames per second. However, we're working on uh, getting that to uh, to 60 frames. Um, yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll capture at uh, 30 frames per second uh, in, in generally there. Uh, again, that's gonna be improved in the future. So uh, anonymous attendee asks, how does motion live see the IP, IP address of the device? Uh, it, your device will, sh I mean, if you're talking about the iPhone, uh, the live face application on the iPhone, it'll show up the IP, it'll show the IP address in that application. It'll, it's like bright or big and bold right in the, in the, in the application. So it's not that hard to find. And any other application like perception neuron, whatever, they're going to have the IP address uh, shown there as well. Uh, so Sterling asks, why is there a latency or lag to your facial captures? So there's not, on, on my side, there's no latency uh, for the facial captures. This will be like the live broadcasting over, over Zoom. Um, since I'm broadcasting to, it looks like about um, 76 people right now. Um, it, it is going to be a little bit of latency involved in, in that broadcast. I do have the, the fastest internet possible, but uh, there is still some latency issues that, uh, and that'll be, you know, just the, 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 the streaming data that I'm sending to, uh, to so many people there. Um, on my side, it's perfect. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's a, it'll be a little bit uh, latent in some cases uh, over, over, over uh, the internet. Maybe my neighbors are using it for like uh, online gaming all day or something, I don't know. But, uh, okay. Um, Another autonomous, an autonomous, hopefully you're an autonomous attendee. Uh, can you recommend a high-end microphone? Uh, yeah, I, I, like the, I like my Rode microphone, um, R-O-D-E. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a German brand. I've used this one for the last two years for all, all my tutorials and webinars. Uh, I think it works fine. Um, and again, uh, when, you, when it comes to microphones, I always tell people this, you can go from Two hundred dollars to two thousand um, dollars for very uh, for very little um, difference in, in you know to the to the layman's ears anyways um, quite easily so just be aware of that but I I think this this Rode microphone was about two fifty or three hundred and uh, for me I mean I think I think you can probably ask those YouTubers those, those young young buck uh, young whippersnapper uh, YouTubers uh, the microphones they're using. Um, I haven't really looked for a new one in a couple of years, so I think that, uh, but this one's done just fine. It's a, an RODE mic. Um, so Alisa asks, does the text-to-speech work for other languages such as Arabic? Uh, yeah, there's there's different uh, adaptations to for the text-to-speech to other languages as well. Um, all sorts of other uh, languages out there. Uh, Christina asks, this is a longer question. Uh, yeah, mentioning about the um, faceware profile, quite expensive. Yeah, um, so Christina, I think I think you know in terms of in terms of budget for facial capture, uh, you can pick up a you know an iPhone 10 on on uh, on the internet for for quite uh, quite cheap these days. It doesn't, need, it doesn't even need to really work in terms of uh, networks. It just has to have that uh, that feature. Uh, you can connect it to a, to a local Wi-Fi. Um, that's the, the least expensive way to, to get the facial capture. I think I can probably predict that uh, in the near future prices will be um, going down as the as the air as the industry gets more competitive. I think um, you'll see prices change a bit. 
again, don't uh, take that to the bank, <laughs> literally or metaphorically. But uh, I can tell you that this is what's happened over the last decade with with body captures uh, as it gets more common um, and more more um, casual users are using it. Uh, yeah, the, the only thing I can tell you that what we offer right now is is the um, the least expensive option would be is if you already have an iPhone um, or get that all in one. Uh, I know I, I know it's uh, even two thousand dollars, but that would be the other option for you there. Um, so I can't give you any uh, sort of alternative alternatives, um, you know, because things get a little quickly, quickly expensive when you get into the motion capture realm. I'll tell you that much. People are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars with their setups. Not even joking. Uh, and that's just that's just independent studios as well. Uh, question from Christian Christian Aguilera: uh, What are some of the features coming out next month? Um, so the improved facial motion capture, the improved muscle performance, the improved lip sync performance on, on the characters, that's the big one. Uh, that's what I um, really recommend looking out for, especially if you're interested in the topics that we talked about today. I think that, um, you know, that's an excellent one to, that's gonna be like blowing people's minds. Uh, and that's coming out real soon. We've been working on that for quite a while. And uh, I saw the results just, um, you know, the finalized results it's like last week and I was I was fairly very impressed uh, so that's going to be the the main one that's coming out there's a couple of other minor ones I think I can't recall right now um, but yeah that's the main one to, to look out for uh, okay so Jefferson asks when using an iPhone how do you calibrate the neutral pose so with an iPhone it's a little bit different um, if you go into the motion live plugin so with the iPhone, you'll have this option here for set zero pose, okay? And um, that's basically the same thing as that uh, um, calibrate face, okay? So the calibrate face right here, that's gonna be this, this is the face wear one. In iPhone, you just do it right here, it's set zero pose, okay? Um, okay, so I talked about the price of face wear already. Someone had mentioned that again. Um, Jefferson also asks, is face, facial capture best with 60 FPS? So it's only 30 FPS right now. Um, yeah, we're working on improving the FPS, like I mentioned. I'm not totally sure if that's going to be in the next, in the update later this month. Um, but that is something that we're working on. I can guarantee you that. And when we're working on it, it generally comes out within a few, a few months or a quarter, a yearly quarter. Um, Anonymous attendee, are there any updates for live face or just face wear? Um, there is updates for both. It's not, it's not gonna be, it's not going to depend on the hardware that you use. It's going to depend on the results um, of the character's uh, muscles, how they're driven and how they're manipulated in, in iPhone. Uh, so regardless of whether you use live face or face wear, um, you're gonna have improved results for sure. Uh, so Walter asks, from which iPhone does it work? Um, iPhone 10, iPhone 11, iPhone 12. Uh, those are the ones. And you can also use, I think, the latest iPads, as long as they have the depth cam. Uh, I'm not sure which iPad started that, but uh, yeah, they have to have that depth cam. Okay. If you're able to do those animated facial emojis in your text messages, then you're able to do the facial motion capture. Okay. Um, I already answered the one for the microphone as well here. Uh, so Lisa asks, is it possible to do the capture using one specific avatar's face and then apply it to a different avatar's face? Uh, yeah, we kind of just did that where I, I saved the, the animation. I saved this weird expression sequence and I click and drag and applied it to my uh, to this character here. So that's just what we did. Okay, remember we did this with the Rhianalite character. And... Um, Helene asks, so a while back, you said something about new animals coming soon. Do you have any more info on that? Uh, the animal, the quadruped stuff, um, that is this year. Well, it's just the beginning of this year now because um, I've seen the kind of um, product roadmap, uh, but it is coming out later, a little bit later this year. Um, there's new animal stuff coming out for quadrupeds and, uh, and improved performance for, for improved animation performance for quadrupeds. Uh, whether that's uh, in the next update or the future updates, I'm not totally certain. 
but it is coming out this year. You only have up to 12 months to wait. <laughs> um, so yeah, I can't give you more specifics than that. Um, so I already talked about how to find the motion IP or the IP address of the device. Another question about that. Uh, question from anonymous attendee is connect an affordable device uh, for motion capture with acceptable quality. I would not recommend it. I mean, I'd, I'd probably save your save your money for for something a bit uh, higher end. I mean, the Rococo suits and, and the basic perception neuron suits right now, I think they're less than $2,000 or around 2000. Um, I haven't taken a look at the price recently. But yeah, just, uh, you know, save, save for that. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother with the connect stuff right now. Because with Connect, obviously you're you're limited to front facing uh, front facing motion cap motion capture. Okay, not from not motions where you turn around and stuff, and that can be very limiting. Um, Christina asks, can we get a webinar on lighting and realistic animations in iClone Seven? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if if you uh, make sure you fill out the survey that we we send out to you guys, we give you ten percent discount in the content store if you fill out that survey for us, and. Uh, Put your suggestions uh, suggestions in there because when we get those suggestions, uh, that's what, that's kind of how we base our future creation of of webinars off of those suggestions. So we do hear you, we do listen. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so Walter asked a question about muscles. I'm not really clear on what the question is though. Uh, let's go to the next one here since we have a few more bunch more questions in the, in the queue. Uh, if a, mo if a mocap actor is wearing makeup, will this produce better uh, capture results? Not necessarily. I mean, uh, makeup or no make makeup, uh, it's not really going to matter as long as you're not covering your eyebrows up. Um, you know, uh, the shadows are the most important thing. Um, I think if you have very dark lipstick, I know if you have a beard, sometimes it can affect um, things uh, specifically for the for the iPhone as well, since the beard can kind of mess with uh, the depth perception a little bit. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of uh, the some additional tips, um, our buddy Mike here did some really good tutorials. I'll I'll throw this learning center here into the chat window. Uh, I clone. I was just going to the icon page. Um, or it might be in motion live here as well. I got the way zoom. Yeah, and learn under tutorials, under the motion live, there's a whole bunch of tutorials here that are focused specifically on, uh, on uh, facial capture. I'd recommend checking out this guy, um, Mike here, who did some really good um, tutorials on the facial mocap much better than I've, that I've been doing because uh, he has a very uh, professional setup there. Uh, he, he, he knows a lot about the lighting. He, he was basically helping us with the beta um, before, when we even started developing this. So um, yeah, check out these videos right here. Uh, again, you can go to the Motion Live site, learn tutorials, and you'll find them all right here under, under facial mocap. There's some that are specifically for iPhone 10, some general ones. Okay, so here's advanced morph editing these are really excellent tutorials. Highly recommend checking them out. Okay, they'll they'll teach you all you need to know about the facial mocap. I kind of gave you a whirlwind tour um, in this webinar here. All right. Uh, Sterling asks, uh, I was on the impression that capturing audio during the mocap would drive the tongue, but my results say otherwise. Uh, yeah, so the the the. Uh, capturing audio during the mocap driving the tongue that's going to be uh, included in, in the update later this month okay so yeah if, if you have any questions about the tongue the tongue stuff is included in the in the updates later on all right yeah in terms of the um audio editing uh that'll also be uh, obviously improved uh, with this next update here uh, okay, a question from Berkey. Can you make a tutorial with import character from iClone to Unreal Engine using facial mocap? Yeah, we have tons of tutorials, uh, Berkey. If you go to our uh, website, um, iClone, again, learn tutorials here. Um, there's also webinars where I took characters into, into Unreal Engine from iClone. I don't want to do that right now since it takes a lot of time to set up. 
not a lot, but you know, a few minutes and I don't want to leave you guys waiting here. Um, but if you go to pipeline, there's a lot of stuff under with unreal pipeline right here. So exporting physics, props, physics, characters or like capes and stuff, character, uh, body animation, um, all sorts of other stuff here. Uh, check out these videos. Um, those ones should help you out. Uh, right. Uh, Walter is asking you about uh, a laugh. Uh, I can't remember the original question actually now, <laughs> but we do have a lot of stuff about laughs. Um, so it seems like we're, we, we continue to have Q and A uh, questions popping up here, guys. Um, we're going to go for another 10 minutes or so. Uh, if I don't get to the questions in the next 10 minutes, then you can always uh, email me as well. Um, Kai at realillusion.com. And there's also, um, our forums as well, which I recommend checking out. Um, so we'll go for another 10 minutes here or so. Um, I know we have 40 questions in the queue, so we won't get to those, um, but we will cut them off uh, in the next uh, 10 minutes or so here. Uh, question from D, and I'll try and get through these as fast as I can. Um, question from D Abbott, any plans on doing new scene tutorials in the near future, like martial arts weapons? I would love to, honestly, I, I love doing tutorials that are um, you know based on action sequences and, and uh, dynamic animation because i think that's a ton of fun it's one of the things i enjoy the most about icon is the ability to uh you know do the uh, action animation so if you have any requests for that put it in the q a or put it in the uh um feedback form or in the forums as well uh, we have a request area for that as well in the forums and we'll, we'll get to those i'd love to do those uh, but uh it's not always completely up to me <laughs> believe it or not uh Wolf asks, is there a plan to use the iPhone 12 LiDAR sensor for face capture? Yeah, that's going to be something that we're going to um, accommodate in the future, Wolf. So you can look forward to that. Any new technology, we're, we're on top of it in general. Uh, Cole asks, are there plans to use or to have newly created facial hair like mustache or beard uh, follow the mouth shapes? Right now, it only follows the head joint. Uh, I think you're talking about accessories that you would attach to your character's face. Um, that's tricky. I can't answer that right now. I don't really know. Uh, as far as I know, the accessories that you attach to your character's head will, will obviously be attached to the head joint, but we do have, um, new and improved, uh, facial hair that's coming out very quickly here. Uh, okay. So Walter's asking about a camera tutorial, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, some of the tutorials have disappeared. Uh, apologies, apologize for that. Uh, you can always search, search them on YouTube as well. Sometimes we take, take things off our learning center just to curate it and, and uh, clean it up a little bit. Um, Anthony asking about using Live Link with Unreal. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, recommend checking out those, those tutorials I showed earlier in the Unreal section of iClone. Uh, so Christine asks, will you, be able to, will you be able to import your CC3 characters into Crazy Talk 8? So a little bit of bad news for, for you, Christina. Crazy Talk 8 is going to be discontinued. Um, everything's going to be integrated into character or cartoon animator 4 and 5 and so on and so forth. So Crazy Talk will uh, be um, discontinued after version 8. Um, so no chance of getting your CC3 plus characters in there. In terms of into cartoon animator 5, I haven't heard anything yet on that. Um, I think they want to focus on the 2D aspect of it. But uh, again, that can always change. Um, so Jonathan asks, can you capture uh, face and body motion from a recorded MP4? Uh, yeah, you can do that with, with the face wear. Um, da, 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 da. Um, here, instead of using the uh, webcam, you can use uh, image sequence. Okay, so you, I mean, it does not MP4 per se, but you have to export it as an image sequence, which you can do in any um, video, edi video editing software. And once you export it as an image sequence, then you're good to go and you can just load it up in here and it'll, uh, it'll run the facial motion capture there. Uh, okay, so another question from Walter talking about um, uh, clean characters, like cartoon-like characters. If you go to our content store, um, 
we have tons of stuff like tune tune style stuff. Uh, I know I don't want to kind of blunder through the content store, but just go up here to like uh, character creator. And there's tons of stuff in there uh, under actor. Uh, and there's probably there's even more in the marketplace, like all this tune stuff here. Uh, see, I'm kind of lagging here. I clicked around too much. But yeah, tons of tons of tune stuff like like these ones here. Uh, this one's from Real Illusion. This is a great pack, uh, and you can mod modify and customize these packs here as well. This one's from CG Artifacts. This one's from Real Illusion, uh, and there's tons of other stuff in there as well uh, that are tune styled from from various developers. Uh, okay, answer that question about the. Um, uh, so another question, Christina, what are the benefits of iClone 7 with the Motion Live plugin? I kind of, I think we kind of just talked about that. Um, you can use any of the hardware. Uh, Motion Live plugin is, is the base standard that you need to do any facial, any, any body or facial motion capture. Uh, okay, let's keep on going here. So specifically in the new lip sync, um, Berkey, like I mentioned, uh, there's, there's more muscles being driven in the face. Uh, particularly around the mouth. So, you know, we, we got the complaint before that, hey, you know, the the default lip syncing with the facial uh, animation, with the facial mocap, the lips are kind of like way off or they're just like not detailed at all. Uh, and so we really worked on fixing that. And I can tell you that the, the lip syncing results that I just showed you are vastly improved. Um, specifically areas like around the mouth, like little subtle mouth movements, Okay, like plosives, like like pl blowing out like a P or or a, like a mm, like, uh, like puckering your lips. You can do all that stuff now. It, it works with the tongue as well, so all that fun stuff. Okay, uh, you'll you'll see it in a couple of weeks here. Yeah. So this question again about the facial hair. I think some of these questions are double questions. Uh, D Abbott asks about uh, um, leap motion with um, arm motion. Um, I'd, I'd whip it out again, D, and just um, um, update. Make sure you have the leap motion uh, plugin updated. Uh, and yeah, there has been some improvements to leap motion. I think in the last few months, uh, there's there was some uh, an update in Q Q3 or sorry Q4 last year. So if you haven't used it since then, then I'd recommend checking it out again. Uh, William asks, can you do audio sync and do the editing without motion live plugin? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, all, all the stuff I showed you in terms of uh, lip syncing, you can do without uh, motion live plugin. You don't need that. Um, you can just do it using the facial puppet tool and an audio file or even just text to speech. Uh, so Scott asks, Scott McNeil asks, does the motion capture create a facial rig for the character? Uh, no. The motion capture itself doesn't create that character. Um, you have to create the character using that character creator software um, that I, sh I brought up earlier there. Oh, and I guess I can quickly show you how to export, you know, the, since I have it open anyways. Uh, okay. Nope. Yes, I know, exclamation mark. Uh, so if you want to export your character with animations, just go to export here. You can go to export FBX. Uh, okay. And then uh, whatever uh, target pre tool preset you're exporting to, like Unreal, for example. And then here you can include motions. You can adjust the frame rate of those motions uh, when they're exported. Um, and just load in some custom ones here, like throw them in, open file. And if we want to choose that one that we exported earlier, weird expression sequence right there. And that'll export as a, as a motion file. This is the, actually the preferred way to export since it includes the base, uh, the base mesh. And uh, you can also embed textures and all that stuff. Uh, mesh and motion. You can only export motion by itself, uh, so on and so forth. That's the way I kind of recommend. Um, so Sterling asks, can you send a link to the mocap gloves you recommend? So the ones that I've used before are um, with uh, da, 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 da. Exception Neuron Studio. These are the least least expensive ones. You can also just type in like a glove 
mocap, stuff like this. Um, we, we, we will have support for Manus VR, which is a very, very good um, uh, hand motion capture. However, this one uh, is it's a bit more expensive, but uh, I highly recommend uh, taking a look at it if you have a bit more um, to spend. Again, it's, it's very focused. So this is probably the highest level of hand um, motion capture that we have that, that's available on the market right now. Uh, again, so Manus VR. Um, and then Perception Neuron Studio. Again, this one comes with uh, the whole shebang. And I think we're supporting a Rococo one pretty soon as well. So everyone's getting on the hand capture now. Uh, yeah, I haven't uh, browsed around the sites for a while, but uh, yeah, those are the ones that we're offering. Manus, I think, is coming out uh, this quarter, as far as I know. All right, thank you, Jefferson. Thanks for attending, everyone. Uh, some of these questions, I guess, are just uh, double questions. Uh, yeah, so Mark McKinney, uh, uh, to answer your question there, like my iPhone's out of commission right now, so I didn't uh, <laughs> didn't show the iPhone, uh, unfortunately, but it's basically the same process as, as the uh, um, uh, faceware. And I can always, uh, refer, you can always check out those, um, those tutorials I showed earlier. Okay. So Eric, can you export, import motion files from deepmotion.com into iClone? Uh, I think so, unless, if, unless there are some weird format, it should be fine. Um, I've never downloaded motions from here. So if they're FBX, um, or BVH, they should be just fine. Or Alembic, we also support that for, for motion files, but it has to be one of those three formats in order for us to import it. All right, so for anyone who's like, you know, still considering buying iClone 7, if you do buy iClone 7, you get a, a very, very good upgrade price um, to iClone 8. Um, so don't, don't be worried about that. Um, we're aware that, you know, some people pick it up right now because they really need it and you get a, a very good upgrade price to, to iClone 8 later on. Um, there's still a couple more um, updates for iClone 7 before that, but uh, yeah, don't, don't worry about that. Uh, Edgar asks, is there a chance to add animal creation to character creator? That's, um, that's something we've been asked a lot and I think that's a work in progress as well, but not for the current version of character creator. Um, yeah, so a lot of people asking for animals. Um, so Larry, good, good question here. You were easily able to import FBX files into CC3 pipeline, but I always get a pop-up box asking for an FBX key. So um, if you're, when you're importing uh, um, stuff into CC3 pipeline, uh, it's a bit of a complicated process. If you export from CC3, it'll create an FBX key. And that's just um, something that you need to import. Uh, you need to have that um, FBX key. It'll, it'll automatically create it when you export the motion um, by itself. Um, uh, yeah, I'm kind of seeing forget where, it, where, it, uh, where it pops up. I haven't done that in, in ages though. Yeah, but when you export it, it creates an FBX key um, and you need to have that same FBX key when you import in. And I can talk more about that later. It gets into more detailed stuff, but... Uh, uh, okay, a uh, couple longer questions here. Yeah, so I did the MP4 sequence, or sorry, the uh, image sequence, um, not MP4. Um, Okay, I got a bunch of <laughs> questions here from from Nick Darlington. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna just I'm gonna ask you to email me, Nick, um, kai at religion dot com, uh, kai at religion dot com, since we're kind of going uh, a bit, a bit of an hour over time here, and uh, and also yeah, there's also the forums as well, forum at forum dot religion dot com for any of the questions that you uh, that you need. Um, I think we're gonna just end it off right there, though. Um, Apologies to anyone if I didn't get to your questions. There's still about uh, 10 or 12 uh, open questions. 
Um, maybe one day we'll make it to a hundred, um, but <laughs> yeah, that'll be a that'll be a three hour long webinar. Um, so yeah, I, I encourage you guys to email me. Uh, I can give you a more personalized answer, a more timely answer, uh, kayatrelusion.com, or just uh, you know go to our forums. It's probably the fastest way to get to an answer to most questions since we have a very helpful and uh yeah that's about it um i think we're going to end it off there guys um just for for time's sake here um to keep things a little bit shorter and uh uh as always make sure you fill that survey uh, we're going to take a survey for you guys we're going to send it out to you guys give you 10 percent discount for the content store if you fill out that survey for us um you know any future topics you want to learn uh, i'd be happy to accommodate that and um yeah, and make sure you check out the, the content store for the weekly specials and all that fun stuff and uh, so on and so forth. So we'll, we'll just uh, um, cut off the webinar there. Uh, make sure you check out the, the webinar later this month on the 26th uh, for Cartoon Animator if you're interested in, the, in importing your 3D motions onto a 2D character. That's going to be really cool stuff. We're going to kind of recreate a 3D scene in a, in, a, in a 2D environment in Cartoon Animator. All right, I think that's about uh, all we're going to cover today. Um, so I want to uh, bid you guys a uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world and uh, keep it real time, like we used to say back in the day. <laughs> and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next webinar. Thanks, guys.